My name is Casey. Um, and I just published my first book. <laughs> now, the first thing people always say to me when I tell them that I published a book is that they tell me that they too have a story that they'd like to tell. So people say things like, I have the greatest idea for a book, but I just never have the time to write it, you know. Or they say things like, I've always wanted to write a book, but I never know where to start. What's the secret? Okay, so I'm going to tell you today that there is no secret. Being productive and finishing what you start is simply a matter of finding your passion and the motivation to work. Okay, so I am passionate about stories. My job as a writer is to create content that will engage an audience, um, that will entertain. So things like invention, creation, production, these are things that take time and work and effort. But I, like so many of you, suffer from procrastination. Procrastination is the silent killer of productivity. Uh, Sorry, I'll admit, I'm kind of addicted to Facebook games and to iPad apps. Like you said earlier, I take five minute breaks that end up lasting three hours. I drop dead in front of the television after a long day of work at school or wherever. Um, these are detours on our road to productivity. Um, so hopefully today, no matter what your passion is, mine is telling stories, but you all have your own passions. Whatever your, whatever your passion is, Hopefully today um, we'll start you down your road from procrastination to productivity. So the first thing we need to ask ourselves is what is procrastination and why do I do it? So procrastination is a serious problem with self-motivation. Um, it's the semi-conscious decision to tell ourselves that something we could be doing right now will get get done later. Um, so we convince ourselves that uh, something we could be doing now, uh, we could do after we have a nap, or tomorrow, or next week, or after I graduate. Because we figure that, um, or we manage to convince ourselves that after that time frame has elapsed, uh, we will have more energy, or time, or knowledge to get something done. Um, Okay, I'm just going to hold this. I'm so sorry, Anika. I can't do it. I don't have to memorize. I procrastinated on practicing. <laughs> it enables us to not do the things that we need to do right now. It limits our creative potential and our creative output. So many people procrastinate on things they fear will be unpleasant. Things that take a lot of work. Things like getting fit or saving money or doing that homework assignment, or writing a novel. We fear that these things are going to take a lot of work and time and effort. So we put them off in order to do more pleasurable things, like play anger nerds. Okay, but this fight that's going on in your brain is a war between the prefrontal cortex, the part of your brain that tells you that you need to work, and the limbic system, the part that always wants to play. So why is it that so often our limbic system wins out when we procrastinate? Even when the, the thing that we're procrastinating on is something that we like to do. Something like writing. I love to write. That's my passion. So why don't I always do it? Why aren't I constantly writing? Why aren't I always being productive? The simple answer is a fear of failure. The amygdala, this little piece of your brain right here, that controls uh, fear and anxiety, teams up with your limbic system to trigger what is called the fight or flight response. So while writing an essay might not seem on par with encountering a wild life or serengeti, for your brain, the reaction is essentially the same. The fear that, you're, that you will fail this essay or assignment or get eaten by the lion causes your prefrontal cortex, the decision maker, shut down. The, the urge to progress 
take this just the same or all right. The urge to procrastinate is the primal instinct to run from the lion. So how do we beat a primal instinct? Some people will tell you simply, set deadlines. That plan ahead and stick to your outlines. Now, as students, we receive um, outlines for what we need to get done. We receive deadlines months in advance. But how many of us, joined, actually start an assignment on the day that it's assigned? Okay, we got, we got a couple. Okay. <laughs> okay, most of us don't. Um, so if setting deadlines was the only thing we needed to do to be productive, all of us would be productive already. But we're not. This is because it's only the first step in our road to production. Uh, so perfectionists like me use procrastination as a self-handicapping tool um, in order to um, avoid the responsibility for negative outcomes. If I begin an assignment on the day that it's assigned, or I start writing that novel when I get a great idea, and that assignment later fails, or uh, the book receives negative reviews, or doesn't get published, the only person I have to blame for that failure is, my, is myself. Whereas if I wait until the day before it's due, uh -huh, I procrastinate, and then it ended and it fails, it's only because I didn't have the time to adequately complete it. I can shift the blame from myself to procrastination. I'm not taking responsibility for the fact that I procrastinated, but rather I'm shifting the blame away from myself. This is how I deal, deal with my fear of failure. This is especially true for, for tasks that you don't need to complete, for tasks that no one's telling you you need to do. So that book rattling around your brain, the reason you're not writing it is because if you never write it, nobody can ever tell you that it sucks. If you never write it, you can never fail because you have not tried. Therefore, the next step on our road to productivity is to hold yourself accountable. This might seem like a hard task for some of us because it's hard to hold yourself accountable for actions if you're the only person who knows about them. There's a simple solution to this too. It's telling someone about it. So if you're going to write a novel, um, you should tell a friend to request updates. You could join a writing group. You could uh, sorry, you should, you should tell a fellow writer about it and explain your ideas and what you want to get done in a certain time frame. Share your deadlines and your expectations and get all of that out in the open. If there's someone relying on you and nagging at you to get something done, you're more likely to feel guilt if you don't do it. Um, and guilt can be a powerful motivator. But don't worry, guilt is not the only motivator in this step. It's also about sharing your triumphs with other people. If you get something done, if you accomplish something and you tell someone you, about it, the pride that you feel in your accomplishment is a powerful motivator. This is especially true for long tasks that don't see an immediate benefit. That's our next roadblock. No immediate fail. No immediate reward. We are more likely to procrastinate on tasks that don't show an immediate benefit to ourselves. If we don't have immediate gratification, we don't feel the urge to complete our tasks. If it'll take me six months to write a novel, why would I start it today? I won't see an immediate benefit. There's a simple solution to this too. Provide yourself with rewards. Reward yourself with things that you enjoy. This is called positive reinforcement. Always stumble on that one. Give yourself a treat when you do. Give yourself a treat when you do something unpleasant. It tricks your brain into getting excited to do it the next time. Um, delaying gratification until you complete a task to make you more likely to want to complete it. If I finish this essay tonight, I'm going to watch Doctor Who. If I work out for two hours, I'm going to eat that chocolate bar. If I write 1,000 words, I'm going to play a couple levels of anger words. Now what I've told you just now might sound a little overwhelming. If I have to complete a task before I get my little reward, I will always be working. It won't be worth it. This is why step four is so important. Setting smaller goals. Break up these huge tasks into smaller 
parts, sometimes teeny tiny parts. For writing a novel, it might sound logical to break it up into chapters, but I don't know any novelist who could just turn out a chapter every day. Break it into manageable parts that make sense to you. So this could be setting a word count for yourself, or a milestone you want to hit, or even just a set amount of time that you want to put in to work every single day towards your goal. So what you can do to start this is to start a calendar and to write down how much you need to get done every single day in order to complete your task in a given time. At the end of that time, if you stick to your schedule and you work at it just a tiny bit every single day, eventually you will have tangible proof in your hands of your hard work. Sometimes we focus too much on the big picture and not enough on the step in front of us, I say as I'm tripping. And not enough on the step in front of us. Baby steps will get you to the finish line slower than sprinting, but you won't be so exhausted when you get there. So once you've planned out your mini goals and you set aside the time to complete them, it's time to get to work. But how are you supposed to work if Judge Judy saw it? Or your boyfriend is texting you? Or you haven't checked your Facebook in like an hour? Temptation is everywhere. This is especially true if you're sitting at a computer with internet access, right? The way to overcome this roadblock is to remove temptation and limit your distractions. Turn off the TV. Move into a space that is designed for working, like your desk or the library. Don't have Facebook open in the background, ever. If you can't do it yourself, if you don't have the, the power of will to not have your Facebook open, there are programs you can download that will block problem sites from being able to be visited during your work time, and that will you know, stop you from going to check your Twitter, or your Tumblr, or your Facebook while you're supposed to be writing that essay for Shakespeare class that I'm supposed to be doing right now. <laughs> isn't needed for your task at all, I recommend you just disconnect completely. Disconnect from the Wi-Fi, turn off your phone, turn off the television, everything. Tune out of the real world for just a minute. And in that quiet space, you will find your productivity. So let's go over the steps we've covered. Set deadlines, hold yourself accountable, reward yourself, set smaller goals, Remove distractions. Five simple steps to get your butt in your desk chair instead of on your couch. I'll let you on in on a little bit of a secret here. The conditions are never going to be perfect. Never. If you wait until you have more time or more energy or more knowledge, you will never get started. You might need to do your task more than once. You might need to start over. You might need to write a second draft. You might need to work harder to do your task because you started it too soon. However, every time you do a task, it gets a little bit easier to do. Now, I'm going to do a test here. Can everyone say this with me next time? Okay. Set deadlines. Hold yourself accountable. Reward yourself. Set smaller goals. Remove distractions. If I can do it, you can do it. So what's stopping you? Let's get started.